What if I told you that Ford built an engine so powerful it forced NASCAR to ban it before it even hit the track? Meet the 427 single overhead cam Cammer, a powerhouse born out of Ford's fiery rivalry with Chrysler and their legendary 426 Hemi. But why would an engine with such immense potential be sidelined before its time? Well, let's find out. Let's go back to the 1960s, the golden era of American muscle cars. This was a time when V8 engines with high horsepower were a hallmark. So it's safe to say that car makers were waging a full-blown horsepower war. Underneath the hoods of many of those legendary machines were engines that defined a generation. And Ford's 427 single overhead cam camera was no different. It all began in 1964 when Chrysler rolled out their 426 Hemi, also nicknamed the Elephant. Now, Chrysler dominated the Daytona 500 that year, pulling off an unforgettable 1-2-3 finish with the Plymouths. Naturally, Ford wasn't too thrilled. Their NASCAR dominance was under serious threat, and they quickly shifted focus to one goal. Take down the Hemi. And guess what their answer was? It was a bold, ingenious, and downright monstrous 427 cubic inch, 7 liter single overhead cam V8 engine that enthusiasts affectionately nicknamed the Cammer. You see, at the time, Ford was already neck deep in high stakes projects. Their GT40 was in development, aiming to conquer Le Mans, and they were building a new double overhead cam engine for IndyCar racing. With resources stretched thin, the engineers tasked with creating this Hemi killer had to think outside the box. To save time and money, they started with Ford's proven 427FE side oiler block, a design already famous for its durability and performance. From there, they worked their magic, transforming it into an absolute powerhouse capable of challenging the best. The base block remained largely unchanged, which speaks volume about its strength. The engineers made a few critical upgrades, an idler gear was added to the camshaft bore, the lubrication system was fine-tuned, and cross-bolted main bearing caps were installed to handle the tremendous power they were aiming for. This foundation would later help Ford secure an iconic 1-2-3 finish at Le Mans. But what made the camera truly special? Well, it was its top end. While the lower half resembled the traditional 427, the heads were revolutionary. Initially cast in iron and later in aluminum, they featured fully machined hemispherical combustion chambers, earning the camera its Hemi badge. Sitting atop each head was a single overhead camshaft, driving shaft-mounted roller rockers. The valve train was equally impressive, with larger stainless steel valves mounted on dual springs. For added durability, the exhaust valves were sodium-filled to prevent overheating. Ford actually showed that with some ingenuity and a touch of rebellion, they could build a legend capable of holding its own in motorsport and muscle car folklore. Now, one of the unusual and most captivating features of the 427 camera was its massive six-foot timing chain. Imagine a chain so long it could almost double as a piece of gym equipment. This chain was tasked with driving both overhead camshafts, making it a simpler and faster solution compared to the more complex gear-driven setups of the time. However, simplicity came with a catch. It wasn't as precise. Under high loads, the chain tended to stretch, causing issues with cam timing. Ford's engineers came up with a clever workaround. They adjusted the cam timing on each bank by 4 to 8 degrees to compensate for the stretch. While it wasn't perfect, it was a creative fix for a challenging problem. But here's another interesting twist. Since the chain rotated in one direction, so did both camshafts. To make this work, Ford had to design unique cams, with one being a mirror image of the other. It's details like these that showcase the ingenuity poured into the camera, despite the tight deadlines.
All these engineering skills translated into jaw-dropping performance. With a single four-barrel carburetor, the Cammer produced 616 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 515 pound-feet of torque at 3,800 RPM. But Ford didn't stop there. They rolled out a dual four-barrel carburetor version that cranked out a staggering 657 horsepower at 7,500 RPM and 575 pound-feet of torque at 4,200 RPM. For its time, these numbers were nothing short of extraordinary. Named internally as the 90-day wonder, the camber became legendary for its rapid development. Stories suggest it was designed and built in just three months, proof of Ford's engineering skills and determination. What started as a side project quickly evolved into one of Ford's greatest engines, leaving engineers, executives, and race drivers in astonishment at its raw power and potential. Truly, the 427 Cammer was a marvel born of urgency, creativity, and a relentless drive to dominate. But as always, there was a catch, wasn't there? The 427 Cammer had the power, the innovation, and the engineering roots to take the motorsport world by storm. But not everyone was on board. NASCAR's head, Bill France, wasn't as thrilled about Ford's creation. He believed overhead cam engines felt too European for the American stock car scene and outright banned the camera from competition. Ford, determined to pit its beast against Chrysler's Hemi, lobbied hard for its approval, insisting it was the only engine capable of giving the Hemi a proper fight. Fans clamored for it too, but NASCAR stood firm. Adding to the drama, NASCAR didn't stop with the camera. They doubled down banning Chrysler's Hemi for the 1965 season, claiming these purpose-built engines were turning stock cars into anything but stock. The move sent shockwaves through the racing world, but it was clear that NASCAR wanted to rein in the escalating arms race in engine design. When NASCAR lifted the ban in 1966, they threw Ford a bone, but with a catch. The camera could only compete with a single, small four-barrel carburetor. Worse still, Ford was restricted to using it in the full-size Galaxy, a heavyweight compared to the lighter Dodge and Plymouth cars powered by Hemis. The Galaxy carried a 430-pound disadvantage, making it nearly impossible to compete effectively. Frustrated by the restrictions, Ford decided to pull its financial support from the series, effectively walking away from NASCAR. But the camera's story didn't end there. It found a second life on the drag strip, where the rules were looser and raw power reigned supreme. In the world of straight-line racing, the camera became a legend, roaring down quarter-mile tracks and cementing its place in automotive history. So while it never turned a single official NASCAR lap, the 427 camera left a permanent mark, proving that its brilliance couldn't be confined by bureaucracy. This powerhouse engine found its way into the hands of some of the most legendary drivers, turning it into a cornerstone of drag racing history. Take Don the Snake Prudhomme, for example. Behind the wheel of a top fuel dragster powered by a 427 camera and owned by Lou Bainey, Prudhomme carved out a legacy as one of the most successful drivers in the sport. This dynamic duo helped cement the camera's reputation as a drag racing icon. Then there was Connie Kalita, famously known as the Bounty Hunter. With his unmatched skills and a 427 single overhead cam engine roaring beneath him, Kalita became a dominant force on the track, proving just how potent Ford's creation could be. Lou Sneaky Pete Robinson also showcased the camera's might in his top fuel dragster. Known for his tactical racing style, Robinson relied on the engine's raw performance to outsmart competitors and claim victories. In the funny car class, dyno Don Nicholson was something else. His early use of the 427 camera turned heads and won hearts, solidifying his cars as fan favorites. Similarly, Eddie Sharpman brought the engine to life in funny cars, further expanding its legend. Even Tom the Mongoose McEwen, though primarily associated with other engines, couldn't resist the power of the 427 camera, playing with its power during its peak. But sadly, the 427 single overhead cam never made it into a production car, probably for the best.
considering its immense complexity and cost. But Ford enthusiasts with deep pockets could still get their hands on one. For around $2,300, which is equivalent to roughly $19,500 today, a lucky few could buy a camera from select Ford dealerships. These engines were like treasure chests for racing enthusiasts, ready to transform any car into a fire-breathing monster. Now, Ford never kept official production records for the camera, but it's estimated that only around 500 units were built between 1964 and 1967. Over the years, most of these engines were heavily modified, making an untouched factory spec camera a rarity in the automotive world. Every now and then, though, one surfaces, like the unit auctioned by Bonhams in 2019, offering collectors a rare glimpse into Ford's golden era of racing innovation. Despite its short-lived career and the fact that it never got to square off against Chrysler's Hemi in a NASCAR stock car, the 427 Camer achieved a legendary status. Nearly 60 years later, it remains one of Ford's greatest engineering feats and a standout in the history of naturally aspirated V8 engines. Its legacy isn't just about horsepower, it's about the passion and ingenuity that drove Ford to create an engine that still sparks wonder and admiration today. So, what do you think? Should Ford's 427 camera have been allowed to dominate NASCAR, or do you agree with the ban? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more amazing car stories. And click here to check out our video on the engines of the 8 fastest muscle cars of 1969. You don't want to miss it!